Hey, what's up everybody? I just wanted to do a small video today. Just as, uh, I don't know, to give a little small thanks back for how my channel's been growing over the last few months. You know, I've, I've had this channel for, I don't know, probably since 2013 or 14. It would kind of put uh, videos up like the rest of the world would put them up, you know, just kind of one here and there and not really illustrate it much. But what I've realized about uh, YouTube is that you're the star of your own channel. And I don't mean that in a, you know, a cocky way or anything like that. People want to see you, you know, or they want to see what you're doing. So it took me a little while to warm up in front of the camera, but now I'm, I'm getting a little bit better to where, uh, I can do videos and I always watch them first and I'm like, I don't know if it'll be a good one or not. And everybody wants their video to go viral as soon as they drop it, you know, make them feel like they're a big shot. But in a way, this is kind of like documenting my life at this point in my life with cars and the things I like to do in my, my spare time. I mean, we all have families and other responsibilities and obligations that always come first, but when all them other stars have aligned, this is what I like to do in my spare time is just mess with old Tri-5s, basically. And I love all the cars, but the Tri-5s is the ones I really focus on the most. So if you subscribed or you commented or you watched my videos, I want to tell you thank you because I, I do really enjoy it. And I enjoy it, answering all the comments also. It's been quite an experience that I've, you know, met a lot of people all across the world through this and it's it's pretty neat so i do a little walk around and then we'll uh go on with our own thing i'm watching my neighbors they're, they're out there kitchen window they i need big privacy fences but here's a quick little walk around on the 57 nomad and boy this thing has come a long way but this is one of my latest projects we actually had some nice weather today where I could take its blanket off and just basically sit in my little patio and sit back and look at it. It still needs an awful lot of work. Uh, it does have no motor or transmission, no exhaust. The interior is kind of hit or miss. I got I got certain pieces for it. Um, but we're we're moving in the right direction. It's a good a real good builder, and I'm I'm very thankful to have it. 57 is one of the harder ones to track down. But it's coming. Slowly it's coming along. It was the original yellow color. And I believe that's the original paint on the dash. And I know you guys, a lot of you, my supporters, you guys have seen this. And it's always cool to see it again, at least I think. And then the latest thing that I did to it, it was dark the last time I tried to finish or tried to show it, but I put that, I, they call that a grill support bar. So I got that in there. And it's coming along pretty good, really. And that was the color I was telling you about. That's the original color. But you can see it's got a lot of space in there. And I did several videos on the convertible over the summer. That was my first attempt at the top. And it turned out pretty decent. One guy just uh, sent me a comment saying that I needed a steamer to get the rest of the wrinkles out of the roof. So maybe I'll do that probably next spring. give it an opportunity for the the sun to actually warm it up a little bit and it it looks pretty good but I'm sure a professional would have really made it tight but I'm just uh I'm just a guy that did that top for the first time and then we're all familiar with this 55 no matter at least I hope you are I had a comment from somebody that Kind of rubbed me the wrong way and I kind of got my emotions a little bit and 
I'm really blessed with this channel because it's a real positive channel. The people that comment on it and things like that. And he said something like either I was too dumb or too, uh, too stupid or too dumb to do the research to know that this car wasn't all original. And I, I commented back to him a few times, you know, to where we could, we could hash it out. And he just, he's one of them one and done guys. He tries to tell me that, you know, this car does not have the original 265. I know what a 55 Chevy would have come with. And then he tries to tell me they had two different six cylinders, something like that. Listen, the six cylinders, they're, they're not my boat. I mean, if I see a 55 Chevy with a six cylinder, I don't care if it has just been rebuilt. It's coming out of there. A lot of people like them. A lot of people think they're cool. They are not for me. And that's all there is to it. But anyways, like I said, he he was really giving me a hard time, and I'm like, well, maybe I was misrepresenting this car to my audience because you don't really know. There might be young people, or there might be people that have really researched a 55 Chevy, and when I say this car's, you know, original, I'm talking about the body on it and things like that. This car has never been hot rotted. It still had a either a 265 or a 283 in it with a power glide when I first got it and that just was not what I wanted I've had them before and they're they're okay if you keep up on the maintenance and everything's working right but a power glide transmission and don't take this the wrong way a power glide transmission out of one of these cars the cast iron ones they are nothing but scrap metal I will ditch them things immediately I've had so many of them when I was younger and and they would, if you didn't drive them all the time, they would leak out all the transmission fluid or they'd get low where you went around the corner and they'd, the engine would rev up. They're just, the reverse is all the way down on them. I know what a 55 Chevy comes with stock, you know, but when I was, when I did the video on this car, I was referring to the body and basically the body interior, things like that. This is, I will say, I guess a fairly stock 55 Nomad. It's got a 327, a four-speed. It's got a posi. It's got 18-inch wheels on it. None of that come in 55. But what you're seeing on the body, the bumpers, the interior, not the material on the seats, but it's real close. That's all stock 1955 Nomad. So he was giving me a, a hell of a time, and I just I was like, you know what? This is my channel. I ain't going to rock like that. That ain't my style. So I threw it in the trash. And then this one... This was a big year for me. Uh, I started working on this car last year. I've had it for about five years. I started working on this car last year and was able to take it for its first drive this year and drove it, I'd say maybe two, 300 miles, maybe if that, probably closer to 150, 200 miles. And it, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of an animal to drive around. It's super cool and everybody, you know, mash it to the floor and see what it'll do yeah that's all fine and dandy but the way this old front end set up the the steering will only turn maybe about one three quarters to one turn left or right before it's hitting the radius rods so if you really got out of shape with that car you could end up in somebody's yard you could wreck that car real quick in the streets trying to show off so i play with it as much as i can uh to where i feel safe with it and it's not, the car does scare me, but if I really had something to, to prove, I, you know, I would definitely push that car to the limit, but I enjoy just how it is and just kind of driving around and you get on a little bit. I mean, first gear you stand on it and it's, it's sideways real quick. It, it's got a lot of power. It's got a 454 LS6 in it, but it's just a cool car. It's just, it's just a. You know, a car from the 60s, not a lot of things have been changed on it. So, that's the showcase right there of the cars. I think I went all over, you know, what I had did to them this year. And it's been a really good year for me car-wise. I've got a lot of progress done on them. Still needs a lot more on each one of them, but... Honestly, I enjoy everything I do to them, so it doesn't matter to me if they'll ever be perfect. 
This car I would like to be able to paint, paint it black, do the body work. And actually, I, I, I do plan on probably putting a 55 Chevy uh, 265 power pack back in that car with power steering and power brakes. And I got two daughters, and they, they really like that car, and I'd love to put an automatic in that car, but at the end of the day, I would, I'd love it to be a, just a little lame 265 power pack with a four-speed behind it, power steering, power brakes. But we'll see how it goes. And then this, this car, I, I don't know how much more I'll do to it. Maybe next year, the roof has got a lot of bare spots, so maybe next year I'll, I'll just sand the roof down and paint it like a I don't know almost like a it come like a shoreline beige color so maybe I'll do it like that but don't put no clear on it or nothing just kind of try to leave it flat and this car I do plan on doing the body work and maybe painting it maybe doing something to it but it takes a lot to to paint one of these cars because you got to tear everything back off of them so it really boils down to, you know, what you guys want out of a car. And I'm, I'm kind of happy with what I have right now. And this one, I mean, other than doing some body work, I, I drive that car around on the primer. I don't, I don't care. But if I, if I have it long enough and things in life go good, I'll, I'll repaint it back all that yellow color. And I've been trying to help Dan find some parts. And this is one thing I wanted to mention to him. Because he's got this same gap around here. And it'll almost make you think something is not right on the car. Because, I mean, the window is all the way up. So if you're new to a Nomad and you, and you just don't really know what goes there, you're like... Something, something's not right because my window won't go all the way up. So, I'll show you guys this and then I'll let you guys get back to your day. You need, it's hard to focus, but it takes a weather stripping in there. You see that weather stripping? So you need that, that's what. That's actually what makes it, that's what makes all the magic happen. When your window rolls up, it rolls into that. You can kind of see that all the way around there. And of course these are a little bit deteriorated and things like that, but they're original. But I do need them for that car. I'd run some original ones if I had it, but they're hard to find. I heard the new ones don't fit that good. So Dan, if you're watching this one, it takes a weather stripping. It takes a weather stripping through there. And it actually it actually screws. You can see the screw holes. It screws. Screws go right through the weather stripping. And it screws right up against the roof. And then you'll be back in business. So once again, everybody that's jumped on board, everybody that's left me a comment, everybody that's watched one of my videos. I'm happy to have you guys. It's been a, it's been a real it's been a real enjoyable uh, experience over this past summer putting together this channel. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next video.